in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed I've spent my life studying the moves of God, studying revivals. I have studied almost every known revival in human history that is recorded or at least noticed. I have studied the Great Awakenings. I've studied the Azusa Street Revival. I've studied the revivals in the times of the generals. Right from Alexander Dowe, Maria Woodward Ita, Madame Gunion, the European revival with men like Smith Wigglesworth, great women like Emmy Simple McPherson, and several others. I have studied the revivals in Nigeria right from the time of Bishop Samuel Ajayi Crowder to great apostolic voices like Apostle Babalola of Christ Apostolic Church to the holiness movement that was pioneered by great men like Pastor W.F. Kumui and several other people and then great men like Archbishop Benson Idahosa and then the spiritual renaissance that happened in the last 10 years that was the last time a major move of the spirit happened 10 years ago not just pockets of revivals the last major move of the spirit 10 years and this is a 10 year cycle and another one is about to begin You're the awesome God. I lift my hands to you. Awesome God, awesome God. I lift my voice to you. You're the awesome God. I lift my hands to you. Awesome God, oh. one more time. I lift my voice. You're the awesome God. There are three things that have happened. Number one, open heavens. A strange season where the heavens are unusually open. Dimensions of graces and possibilities that would not otherwise have been experienced by the people within that region. There is an unusual open heavens manifesting in healings, miracles, civilization, industrialization, whatever it is. Number two, intense and heavy criticisms and persecutions. The move of God has always been characterized by intense, heavy, almost on bearable persecutions number three 
many, maybe not all, but many of the moves of God were cut short of their full spiritual potential. Many of the moves that you read, both in the Bible, we see men like Samson, who was appointed to be a judge. The full potential of the manifestation of his ministry did not find expression. Men like Moses, who was supposed to take the people out of Egypt, the land of bondage, into the land flowing with milk and honey. Something seemed to happen in the middle of those moves. And I have spent my life studying it because the move of God that will return the Christ must be dealt with with precision, intelligence, and it must be finished to the latter. Hallelujah. Is God speaking to us tonight? Now, if you don't love God and the agenda of God, you will not find what I'm saying tonight interesting. If you are just a casual Christian wanting marriage, wanting a car, house, a good grade, and, and you just came because you are hungry, give me tea, give me bread. This will not concern you. But if you are one who is connected to the love and the agenda of God, this teaching tonight will resonate in your spirit. Many of you will not be able to sleep after this teaching tonight. Hallelujah. There are many reasons why revivals start and there are many reasons why revivals stop abruptly and if we do not identify some of these reasons then we may not be able to completely live out the fullness of God's expectation all over Nigeria as a case study we see that there is an awakening campuses different non-denominational meetings, even churches that will otherwise not be open to certain dimensions of the spirit. The eldership may not be open, but there is a renaissance happening in the youth ministry. The youth and the children, something they themselves cannot explain. And in the midst of the persecutions and the rest, it's like a fire that cannot be quenched. Are we together now? This is very important. But more tragic is the reason why revivals end. Revivals end because of a very simple factor. And it's called the humanity. The humanity of men. The humanity. Please pay attention. The very fact that men are human is a big limitation to the sustenance of the move of God. Every revival, every spiritual pursuit that has gassed out happened because the humanity of men impeded the pace with which the spirit was going. Are we together? Now, let me tell you something. When God begins to use you, pay attention. When God begins to use you, the devil will never come to attack you. He will only attack you before you are being used. But if he does not prevail, he will not come when the move starts. The move of the Spirit and the gift of the Spirit will be working in your life and hell will be quiet. Please watch this. You will continue building the churches Building the cathedrals, healing the sick, doing mighty things, and hell will be silent. Sometimes you can be mistaken that it is just your faith that is flawlessly defeating the devil. Keep going. Satan is not a fool, he is a liar, he is a deceiver, but he's not a fool. Satan has an advantage of age. And that advantage of age has afforded him the opportunity to study mankind. Are we together now? Before our dispensation of humanity started, he was there. 
and he has studied the moves of God right from Bible and modern history. And he knows that there is one factor. It's called the humanity of men. The humanity of men. The fact that men are human and frail is something that if you do not understand and create a spiritual system that overcomes your humanity, you may never last in the move of God. I lift my hands to you. I sing this song because I woke up with it. While I was just waiting upon the Lord, I, I started singing it from the realm of the spirit. You know there are songs, I told you that songs are like ladders in the spirit. There are times that songs represent what God is doing in a season. So you have to keep singing them until the essence of their strength is ministered to you. Then the song will stop ministering to you. Not that the song has lost its power. It has accomplished what it was sent to do. There are many songs that have come from this altar and we sing it for a few weeks and then it just dies down. It's an impartation. The songs help you rise to a dimension. I lift my hands to you. Awesome God. Awesome God. I lift my voice to you. You're the awesome God. I lift my hands to you. Awesome God. One more time. Lord, we lift our voice to you. You're the awesome God. I lift my hands to you. Awesome God. When John was caught up in Revelations, chapter 4 and 5, he was before the throne room and he began to see four living creatures that were a reflection of the multifaceted dimensions of the Christ. Because everything in the throne is a reflection of a dimension in God. Everything. From the elders, to the creatures, to the sea, right? To the rainbow, to the thunder. Everything is a reflection of the dimension of Christ. So when the Bible says his hair is as white as wool, it's a communication of his righteousness. When it says his eyes, is his face is like the brightness of the sun, and so on and so forth, right? But there are four living creatures that communicate to us the different dimensions of God that are resident in man. The first living creature that John reveals to us, and Ezekiel also shows us, right? And Daniel the prophet also sees that. The first dimension is the face of a lion. The face of a lion reveals the dominion dimension of God. The fact that God is king. The fact that he is royalty. Incontestable with any king and any government. Please pay attention. The, the face of a lion reveals our dominion. It reveals the fact that we are kings and priests. According to Revelation 5 verse 10. It says we have been made unto our God kings and priests. And we shall reign in the earth. So that dimension of God shows you that you cannot be under situations and circumstances. It lets you know that you are like him in the similitude of the lion of the tribe of Judah. Are we together now? When you catch that dimension, then you have the consciousness of who you are in Christ. You have the consciousness that you will refuse to allow life situations to put you down. Are we together? The dimension of him being king. When he was born king, the wise men came and they offered gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh to the king. Hallelujah. Now but, when you come around that dimension alone, it has a consequence. And the consequence of camping around only that dimension is pride and arrogance. 
having the revelation of your kingship and your dominion and who you are in Christ alone is not a balance. In one of the visions, the prophet saw the four faces in one body and then in another, they were separate. Because they see in part and all of them prophesied according to the limit of their perceptions. Like when the Bible says the streets of heaven are made of gold. They are not made of gold. Gold was the best communication that his eyes could interpret with. It's more than gold. It's not gold. Are we together now? Is God helping us? And so we see that pride is the natural consequence of camping around that dimension. And so you have arrogant people in the body of Christ. Right? You give them pure water, they throw it back at you and say, I'm a king. Kings don't take pure water. Get me Eva, cold one, in a tray. Serve me like a king. All of this childishness are manifestations of this exaggeration of one dimension. And God knows. So immediately, to balance it, the next face is the face of a calf. And a calf speaks of servanthood. And so you are reminded immediately that you are not only a king, but you are a servant. Are we together now? That servanthood dimension now comes to balance your revelation of you being a king. So that as you move around, I cannot do this. You will realize that the reason why you are given dominion is to serve. Many people hate being called servants because our theology has taught us that sons and servants, servanthood is an insult to sonship. Go and read your Bible and you'll find out that the hallmark of sonship is servanthood. The ultimate proof that you are a son indeed is when you become a servant. It says, permit this mind to be in you. Philippians 2 from verse 5, which was also in Christ Jesus. He said, although he was equal with God, a king, he did not consider it as a thing to be grasped. Then he reduced himself to become a servant, dying the death on the cross. So he says, let that mind be in you. That the moment God anoints you, you realize that that servanthood dimension must find expression in your life. There are many men who are not true servants, especially in the body of Christ. We have kings, Oga, but very few people are servants. That shepherd's heart, that servant heart, many men of God lack. They don't pray for their congregations. They cannot pay the price to serve. Jesus was teaching this dimension and he called the disciples and guarded his loins with a towel and got water and told all of them, come, I want to wash your feet. In ancient times, because they didn't have means of transportation like us, they could use camels and the rest, and then they could walk. So when you came into the house of a man, part of the respect is that their servants or other people would come to wash your feet to make it clean. Then you can get into the house. And Jesus said, I want to do it for you. That's why the disciples were amazed. They, you can't do this, come on. We have seen you at the apex of your ministry. You are a king indeed. He said, don't worry. Peter said, no way, I won't allow you. Then he told them something. He said, if I, being Lord, has washed your feet, make sure you go and do the rest. It doesn't mean go and wash the feet of others. Take this ideology as you do ministry. That when you get to a point where you are king, remember you are servant too. Let me tell you something. The reason why many people never access certain dimensions of God is because that dimension is revealed and left for servants. One of it is the dimension of illumination and spiritual revelation. Until you become a servant, you will never have access to true light. The Bible says, Revelation 1 verse 1, it says the revelation of Jesus, which he gave unto his servant John. Right? He gave unto his servant John. In Joshua chapter 1 verse 1, when, when Moses was dead, hear God's testimony about him. He came and he said, Moses, my servant is dead. Paul, the very one who taught us sonship and revelation of our dominion in Christ, calls himself, I, Paul, a bond servant. 
The word born servant there, for you to understand the concept of born servanthood, you must understand what we call the concept of jubilee. In ancient time, jubilee was after seven Sabbaths. That means seven years, right? Once the Sabbath year is always the seventh year. And so after seven Sabbaths, 49 years, the 50th year is declared a season of jubilee. And certain activities happen in that season of jubilee. Are we together now? Yeah. In the season of jubilee, if you owed somebody or someone owed you, you release them. They go free. And then if you had servants and slaves that maybe you captured in the time of war, you would release them to go free. But watch this. If in the course of the slave's service to his master, the master treated him well and with love, on the day or in the year of jubilee, listen, when he now releases the servant to go, the servant will say, I'm free now, but I choose to return to you. Are you together now? I return not because you now captured me in war. I return willingly and I want to continue serving you because you are a good master. And that way, the master will now pierce his ears and put earrings in it as a symbol that, look, I am not violating Jubilee. This guy had an opportunity to go, but he came and willingly gave himself because of love, not chains. It was in that simile too. He says, I, Paul, a born servant. Meaning, I have a choice so, to pack up and say, God, I don't have any business with you. But the love of God has constrained me as though a man who is under chains. Are we together now? I, Paul, a born servant. Paul rejoiced at the excellency of being called a born servant than being called an apostle. I, Paul, a born servant. A born servant. At the end of his life, he looked and he said he was the least of all the apostles. That it was a privilege for him to have served. Is God speaking to us? Two dimensions. Now again, just like the first, there is a limitation too. When you stop and come around you just being a servant alone. Are, are you getting blessed already? When you stop around that dimension, the trouble is, you can get to a point where you can literally kill yourself. And so the next face gives you a balance. The face of a man. That's where your humanity comes into place. The third revelation that balances up servanthood is your humanity. There are times that people walk their lives out in a bid to pursue the agenda of the kingdom. People literally wear away their body. One man in modern history and modern revival who was a victim of that was the Welsh revival. Right? Um, what's his name? Many of you don't know them. Evan Roberts, thank you. Evan Roberts was a young man. He lived only a few years after the revival and he died. Because he got to a point where, like I'm sharing with you, the burden of the Welsh revival. I mean the city of Wales and all this place was catching fire. People would literally read about the, the revival on newspaper. And then explosions of the gifts of the spirit. Explosions of salvation and the rest. And he felt a need. He was so tired, he was not sleeping, he was not resting, he paid little attention to his health. And he literally weared himself to death. The third dimension that we see in the throne room is the face of a man. And this is very important, especially for men of God. Because sometimes we are embarrassed to admit the fact that we are humans. Because we... We have taught a theology that absolutely lets us know that we love God and we fear God, which is correct. But then we are embarrassed to accept our humanity. And we wear ourselves out. There are men of God who are embarrassed to eat food. They don't eat where people are because they feel, if I eat, you would think I'm not fasting, I'm not a, a serious person. And people do all kinds of things. There are people who, who specifically work themselves to being lean. Intentionally. 
not necessarily because he was fasting that made them so. It's like a pride because it looks like those who really carry the anointing are not fat. He said, watch A and B and C. Why will you be like this? We don't trust this anointing you carry. And so people literally strangle away their humanity in a bid to justify that they are spiritual. Jesus, your Savior, who was the Christ, got to a point in his life where when he went to funerals, he wept. When they told him, Lazarus, whom you love, is dead, he went and he had to break down. It never meant he was not God. Are we together? He broke down and wept. When John the Baptist, his cousin, was told that he had died, he retreated away from ministry and ran to a mountain just to go and mourn John. And when he went to mourn John, people just heard he was passing. Let me tell you something. It's amazing the kinds of expectations that people have for you when you carry the anointing. They don't expect you to be human. Are we together now? Absolutely. So let it not be strange to you, men of God, when you find out that people's expectations, you can walk yourself to death. There are people who call maybe around 1 or 2 o'clock. And I pick and I'm like, ah, and I say, ah, apostle, you are sleeping. <laughs> now, I don't understand the meaning of that, but if I do, this is what it means. Come on now. I mean, I'm sleeping, you are sleeping too. Who is praying for who? <laughs> See that? And sometimes, as funny as it is, that statement embarrasses you. It looks like a sting to your 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 spiritual perception the way that they have perceived you and you feel no 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 i wasn't sleeping i was just nodding my head around i'll soon read the bible are we together now the face of a man there was a time on Sunday, Jesus was hungry. I'm sure after service, he was on his way and he just meandered into a field of corn. Ha! And the people saw him. And they were surprised. And then this and that and that, he had an encounter and then he ate corn and people were saying all kinds of things. There was a time that um, the prophet was hungry. Have you read that? Who was hungry? Say it again was as soon as he got to the woman the widow of Zarephath he said madam water not what is your problem madam service my humanity I'm dying I've trekked a long distance while she was coming he said please prepare bread for me quickly and the woman said Abba man of God be, be fair on me you are a prophet don't you have the eyes to see what happened to your eyes There was a time, the family of a prophet, they were about to carry the children as collateral. Is it in your Bible? There was a time, Elijah, the fiery prophet, was afraid and a woman made him run. A man called down fire on soldiers but ran away from a woman. He ran away to a point that God had to say, Elijah, why are you here? He said, God, God, just follow me. I'm, I'm coming with a very powerful message. Are we together now? Humanity. Jesus, the Christ, almost aborted salvation willingly. Many of us do not know. The Bible says we do not have a high priest who has not been touched with the feelings of our infirmities, limitations. Jesus was tempted like us in every way. One time, um, let me share with you something very humorous. Uh, I think we're, we're somewhere and a very pretty lady was passing and we're all looking. Me too, I was looking. Listen, <laughs> when I was looking, I noticed, I won't tell you the person who, who was with me. He now tapped me and said, ah, apostle. <laughs> and I quietly, I was, not to mean, ah, man of God, what happened to your spiritual seriousness ah no 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 you are not supposed to be seeing this you are supposed to be seeing men like trees <laughs> a 
Hallelujah. Never forget that part of your construction of being like Christ, in that design, your humanity was not taken away. It was left there. Jesus at Gethsemane looked at the Father and for the first time, he wanted to reject being the Word. Because the Word means living logos, meaning a manifestation of the thoughts of a man. Anything Jesus was doing, that was what the Father was thinking. Are you following me now? And for the first time, he wanted to do what God was not thinking. He said, Father, if it be thy will, Kai, let this cup, brothers and sisters, if it happened to Jesus, it will happen to you. I know that you will receive this. You will hate me. You say, yes, come back now. I'm back. Are we together now? If it be possible, take this cup off me. But then he quickly remembered. He said, nevertheless, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. Here is my heart, my mind, my everything. Take it as yours alone. Sing it one more time. Heals my heart, my mind. Lord is my heart, my everything. Take it to so Listen. The humanity of man is a very serious part of him. We overlook it. But this is the part that destroyed people in revivals. Let me quickly just round up the four living creatures and then we'll get into the crux of the matter. Sometimes, God brings the balance again. You can be so human. Listen. That if you allow your humanity to have a toll on you, it will cause the devil to wreck you and destroy your life. Because you will give excuses for everything and say, I am human. Are we together now? And so, a pastor gets to a point where he's weak and weary, and he starts sleeping around with everybody, and if people are saying, he who does not have stone, you have um, seen you cast the first stone. In ten years, I slept with two ladies. Wouldn't you clap for me? Didn't I try? You know, we are human. And people say, it's true. It's true. That was what Jesus invoked to free the woman who was caught in adultery. He said, he who does not have sin. In other words, whoever among you here who wants to claim his humanity is not finding expression, cast the first stone. And the priest and the Pharisees remember the things they have done around the temple that people have seen. Just threw the stone and went away. Then the final revelation is that you are divine. The face of the eagle. So when you get to a point where you are so human, sometimes it can bring weakness in you, inferiority in you, and it can let you see that this assignment is impossible. No, I can't do this. God, you are giving me a mandate to the nations. I'm, I'm only a child like Jeremiah. I'm only 21 years. I'm only 30 years. I'm only 40 years. I'm only 50 years. Or I'm alone. And he told Jeremiah, do not say I am a child. I'm aware that you are human. Or like Moses who said, Lord, I'm a stammerer. Stammerer, are you deaf? Have you not heard me pray to you? How long did it take you to get the words together? I'm a stammerer. And God said, who created the body? Do you not know that you are divine? You must get to a point where you realize that in spite of your humanity, you are divine. That gives you comfort. Hallelujah. Now back to revivals. So that you can appreciate the things that I'm saying. I showed you these four dimensions. Because every one of them represents the progressions of true revival. It first starts with revelation and access. Possibilities. 
before God begins to use you, He brings you to a point where you see that the nations are conquerable. Have you seen people like that? Oh my goodness, about to be used by God. Lord, I can take this city. Give me Zaria. Give me Nigeria. Give me Kaduna State. Give me the north. Give me the world. I can establish the church. Lord, you are revealing to me that my ministry will have 1,000 branches. I'm ready for it. That's the lion speaking. Because the lion is a bold animal. Are we together? The king of the jungle. Fearless. So you say, Lord, it doesn't matter. I will heal the sick. Let them criticize me. I will heal. Then God says, all right, thank you. This is all I want. The gates be opened. Then you become a cow. And then, by the time you are serving people, the very people you are serving begin to stab you. You start a church and somebody comes to collect the church from you. Ah, You were not told that that was part of the things you will meet in the journey. When the brothers, remember Joseph showed us this. He woke up and had a dream and said, I saw it. The sun, the moon, 11 stars were bowing down. And the father looked. You say, you mean even me will bow to you? Don't say, are you joking? This is my destiny. But he did not know the progressions that will lead to that destiny. Are we together? Then his brother betrayed him. Before he would reconcile, they now sold him into slavery. Before he would settle on that one, a woman now comes. He was almost, I'm sure you would think that promotion was now coming for him, that they were making him Potiphar was now liking him. Then, that thing that was supposed to be an advantage, one day he goes to Potiphar's house and meets a woman who looks at him. And that becomes the source of his trouble. His service and faithfulness to Potiphar got him into trouble. And then, to jail. Then he now interprets the dream to somebody who forgets about him for two years. Are we together now? And then he became human. He broke down. Listen, let me tell you the truth. And men of God, learn this. The moment you begin your journey of servanthood, realize that you are human. So when a revival starts, Satan will never strike when it is the lion that is moving. Keep moving. Oh, all of you, come and see what God is doing. There is a move of God in this nation called Koinonia. Look what God is doing. Joshua Selman and everybody is happy. Then he begins to serve. Mm. Then a day comes, you look and say, is he only Ben Gada who preach or pray? Then a day will come, you now look and say, what does it take to sit in front here? Then a day comes when you begin to go through fierce persecutions. Your church suddenly turns to you and says, we have noticed that there are some radical young people in this church who are not complying by the constitution of the church. And we are about to take a very decisive action. And you are wondering, that is me. And then you stand on stage and the preaching is all about you. There are people, some of you are sitting here looking at me. And these people are the ones who insult elders. And they do all kinds of things. They pray in one language like that and so on and so forth. And, and then you are amazed. Your life becomes... First, you will, you will pretend you can take it. That's usually how we are. Ah, forget it. I'm, I mean, I'm, it's not today. Oday she. <laughs> then you continue. The church starts. The ministry starts. Right? Or as a sister, the marriage does not come. Lord, I will keep serving you. Marriage or no marriage, what is a man's self? The devil does not come then. That's just a servant speaking. Wait until the human starts speaking. A day comes in your life, no matter who you are, you will have to stand face to face with your humanity. Servanthood reaches its end. And it says, I've tried. The Bible says, do not muzzle the ox that treads upon the corn. Because even it... Are we together now? Hmm. It is at this point where your humanity comes in. 
the reality of the vicissitudes of life. You are serving God in ministry, but you just hear a news that somebody in your family died. And you are saying, what is, what is going on? As if that is not enough, you just hear that your elder sister's husband beat her and threw her out. And said, Lord, you are faithful. I will give you thanks in all things. The servant is still speaking. Satan never comes. It's like a spiritual meter. He keeps watching. And then a guy comes into your life and you are happy. You are saying, Lord, so finally, this is how you have planned it for me. Before your smile finishes, he just sent you a text and said, we went to pray. And honestly, they told me you are not the one. It's not like you are bad. It's just that you are not the one. You now add the balance of that pain on what has been there. And a day comes like Jesus, you will break down. Listen, people lie in church. That's why we don't access to it. Those times are the times you go to pray and there are no words to say. You just keep moving up and down. It's not like you don't have prayer points. You don't even know what to say. You don't know if it's tongues. You will start or praise and worship. You play a song and off it back. The song that used to bless you is like it's irritating you. Hmm. Lord, you took my pain away and then you gave me joy. You're my peace, my melody in the center of the storm. You gave me a brand new song to sing to you. That's why I will lift up my voice and sing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you got to that point in your life? Where as a man of God, you carry your Bible and you can't read it. It's not backsliding. You open it and you don't know what else to read. At that point, the devil is ready to come. When Jesus was fasting to prepare for ministry, Satan was just hanging around. He knew there was a time he would come. When Jesus was weak at the apex of his humanity, then Lucifer comes and says, Jesus, Jesus barely answered and said, Kai, but you say, Abba. How can you be killing yourself when it is within your power? Have you forgotten you are the word? If you have forgotten, let me remind you. Once my master, always my master. Let me remind you, Oga, you can turn stones to bread. Don't think Jesus just say, oh, God forbid. No, it's not true. It's not the way the Bible puts it. There are possibilities you may never consider until you are a human being. Are we together? You made a vow that you will never marry a married man. As a second wife. And a time comes when your humanity comes. Satan can come directly or through a friend and say, see, there's a way we do it. It's not, Abba, are you a fool? Yes, you, can, you can plan this thing. And for the first time in your life, you will, you will be shocked that you are considering that possibility. You will rebuke yourself afterwards. But at that point, or the first time a married woman now looks at a young man of 21, and something rings in her that can't I have this boy as a sugar son? Since this stupid man is not, is not around. Now listen, those who do not understand spiritual growth will criticize those people and say, I'm, I'm disappointed. How about my mother? No. Humanity. Are we together? I've seen pastors who got to a point where they told them, look, you are suffering, no? If you want ministry to move, what is there to wash your eyes? Abba, you are behaving as if you are the only one. After all, the most important thing is your salvation. Are you not born again? He said, yes, I am. Let them wash. It's an addition. It's all, it's still God. No matter how it comes. But let me tell you, you get to that point. A man of God once called me. And a prophet told him that he can help him and, and fix some things. And there were certain flakes and leaves that he would bury around the church. True story. And he'll be fasting for seven days. He said at the seventh day, even if a pin passes his head, is over him, his eyes will see it. It's easy to talk when you have crowd. Wait until you walk with 12 people for three years. The devil will, he will come before, then he will allow you. Have you seen people like that? You want to give them something, they refuse. God forbid, leave them. When they sat around, no options. You now come and say, are you in any way interested in this? 
it has happened to ladies. A guy will ask them at 24, say, me, you, look at you. The guy will leave them. He will come back at 35 and say, I'm still around. Say, please, I don't know about... He said, I thought you said God. Say, say, forget, God has spoken again. The humanity of men is something that killed these revivals. Watch this. So when this revival is started, Satan tried to stop it. But when he found out that it was too late, he said, I'm coming back. Read your Bible. The Bible says he left Jesus for a season. And he waited. At the apex, he now started bringing people into the meeting. And they started saying, look, the whole city is already taking this man. We are losing our ground here. Let's start coming up with something. And all of a sudden, Judah started looking at the treasury. And saying, me, I know what is there. I'm the one counting the money. Why are we not helping ourselves? The Bible says those who walk by the altar should live by the altar. What is all this one? I can't be holding money that I'm not spending. All those motions are Satan coming back. There was a time he entered Peter and spoke to Jesus. And Jesus looked and said, Kai, get thee behind me. And Satan said, you saw me. I'm coming back. This time around, he came in through Judas. That's what happened to Samson. Samson got to a point where he tore the lion. Satan said, leave him. Kill the lions. Continue. And then at the point where he needed a wife so desperately, a strange woman came called Delilah. Samson was helplessly under the influence of this woman till he lost his, his, um, his hair and his eyes. Catherine Kuhlman was a woman of power. This woman moved in dimensions of the spirit very few people in our generation have walked in. But the time came, she remembered that she was human. She wanted a man in her life, like every woman will. And her keyboardist. The people who would come to church and play. Her humanity caught up with her. And her inability to manage that humanity aborted certain things. Alexander Doway got to a point where people exalted him. He was the spiritual mayor of his city. And then he got to that point and men said, look, there is no difference between you and Elijah. We can literally put the Bible and see that you are him. He first said, no, 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 no. All glory to God. After a while, he said, truly, but me too, let me talk to myself. I'm really Elijah. And he went and dressed in Elijah regalia. Are we together? William Branham, the uncommon prophet. A man whose eyes were like that of an eagle. He would be talking with you, a stranger, as if you have met. It's not just like word of knowledge. Okay, your head is this, um, your this is that, you have ten naira in your wallet. No. I mean, he would be talking and say, Femi, um, how are you? How is Rema? This is how he talks. This is a stranger he has never seen. So what's the other challenge in, in, in Rema? What, what is the problem? Uh, but have you considered discussing it with uh, your uncle, Ule? This is, this is a stranger. That's how William Branham operated. It's not lo- just like he would give you a word of knowledge, then you will confirm. You don't have to confirm it. He's conversing with you. Yet he got to a point, a hollow was literally seen on his head when they snapped him. He operated in that dimension of grace. But he came to a point where his humanity started tampering with the divine revelations he was writing and he started writing certain teachings at the end of his life that became an error that even certain sects in the body of christ have not recovered from today satan comes to you at a point where servanthood has led you to see your humanity at that point where you are down then he comes. He comes with suggestions. Very subtle yet forceful. He comes with all kinds of things. I say this not, not in criticism to the glory of God. The latest of this catastrophe that happened to the body of Christ happened this year. Right? I say it because it's something that is known. God TV. Rory and Wendy Alec. 
God TV is about maybe the second largest TV, Christian TV station after TBN. Is that true? TBN right now is almost, it's, it's, it's almost down. You know why? Because at the apex, when several things were happening, Crouch, um, 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 Gene Crouch and then the other man, they are all dead now. At that point, the woman was struck with cancer. Bam! And it became an indictment in the ministry. Then all kinds of scandals started evolving. And before you know it, their humanity caught up with that reality. And right now the ministry is where it is. God TV. Benny Hinn, at, as at the beginning of this year when they were buying a, up a property in Plymouth. Right? Benny Hinn was there. Look at all the notable men of God that came around. They held different regional meetings. Great men like um, Matthew Ashimolo and the rest were there. While that was happening, the financial ministerial burden on the man was depressing him, his humanity. They needed millions of dollars within a short time to pay for that place. And it was depressing him. And in that depression, he started, you know, when people are humans, they become stupid. They do things you never believe can happen. And so he started having an affair with a woman outside of his wife. Very beautiful woman. See that? And then when the world was about to say, we see the revival that is coming. One day he got up in the place of work and told the world, I quit from God TV and left. Left the ministry till today. The great man of God, Benny Hinn, a figure that we know and we admire and love so much, about three years ago, was preparing to go for a crusade when he was almost collapsing. And people said, no, this is, this is terrible. I mean, this is a man, this is a healing evangelist. He went to the hospital, they had to give him magnesium shots and all of that. And shortly after that time, in February that year, preparing for another crusade, and a divorce letter comes. In less than 24 hours, about half of the partners in the ministry left. Benny Hinn. Our great Benny Hinn. Benny Hinn was broken. Benny Hinn was broken. My wife, I have taught on integrity in marriage. We have grandchildren. When a grandmother leaves her husband, that's a serious issue. We have grandchildren. Couldn't you just endure? No, we are humans. I don't know if God is ministering to you tonight. One person that has overcome is Benny Hinn. I love him. He has shown the world in modern day that it is possible. When they were joining him and the wife I was watching, I followed it. And I looked at him. I said, my father, my father, the chariots of Israel, you have shown we the people coming that it is possible. A man can conquer the grip of humanity. I lift my voice to you. You're the awesome God. I lift my hands to you. Awesome God. Awesome God. I lift my voice to you. You're the awesome God. I lift my hands to you. Awesome God. Awesome God. Every revival that fell, fell because Satan struck at the point where the people were humans. But they did not sustain the technology in the spirit. They didn't know. They knew how to receive power. But they, they, they did not know how to conquer this body. Paul said, I beat my body daily. Is it in your Bible? How many times? Daily. He said, let, let it not be that after having preached, I myself will be a castaway. Isaiah shows us the key. Chapter 40, please. Shiva Kata Baragabala. Awesome. 
for some of you you will not need this message now you will need it 10 years from now you will look for this tape like the deer pants after the water Verse 28, Isaiah 40 verse 28. Now you'll understand what the Bible was saying. Help us media. We'll read down to 31. Hallelujah. And so, he began to tell us. Watch this. Hast thou not known? Question. He said, hast thou not heard? That the everlasting God, you know what everlasting means? No weakness, no backsliding. Every time the Bible begins to give God these qualities is because he's trying to contrast him to the limitation of man. He says God is everlasting. There are no breakages, no rising and falling. He says the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth. Listen, the Bible says he what? Faints not. So the Bible is talking about fainting. Mm. this is not backsliding this is the humanity of man he's helping us and showing us a key that will keep us 30 years in ministry and when all the dust settles you are still standing are we together now 30 years in life that people will not look at you and say I remember promise there was a time this guy carried fire there was a time in Zaria or in Abuja. If you talked about promise, you were synonymous. But right now, he says he fainted not, neither is he what? Weary. Then he says there is no searching of his understanding. In other words, there is a system in him that makes that possible. And he's about to reveal it to us. But he says he giveth power to who? The faint. And to them that have no might, he increased strength. Everybody read if you are a Christian. One, two, read. Even the youth shall faint and be where he stop. Did he say may faint? The Bible says the glory of the young man is in his strength. But he said no matter how strong you are, if you are in this world, your humanity will catch up. He says, the young men shall faint. A day will come, your courage and your, or your audacity will come to a point where you do not even know what to believe again. Please go back, go back, 30. Just stay there. 30. He says, and the young men shall what? Mm. This is a prophet speaking, you know. He's not just a messenger. He's a prophet. And then he says, this is a possibility that you can come to. In ministry, in life, as a student, it's easy to see five carryovers in 100 level and say, God is faithful. Your latter will be greater than your past. But by the time you are in your final year, final session, and you see two carryovers all second semester, you come, you come for koinonia by two o'clock. And you sit alone. When people are making noise around you, you, you just go outside. And people are saying, are you okay? Have you been in a situation where food becomes like a resentment? You don't even want to eat. You don't know whether you are hungry or not. You don't know what part of your body is paining you. Is it your head? Is it your hand? If somebody is talking to you, the voice of people literally is like noise. You want to be alone. This is the name of where you have gotten to. The realm of weariness. I heard of a great man of God in this country who, because of depression a few years ago, was almost committing suicide. I, I can't mention his name, you know. But if I mention his name, I, some of you will be discouraged and say, I can't believe it. No, please tell me it's a joke. Literally, suicide. It was another man of God that called him and said, you can't do this. You can't do this. You have come too far. Hallelujah. The humanity of Judas caught up with him. 
He said there's no remedy. If he was only patient for two more days, salvation would be possible for him. If Judas was, was just patient for two more days, there was a possibility that with the resurrection of Jesus, he would be free. And the guy went. He didn't manage his humanity. He, hung, he bought a field with the money, hung himself, and died. God is ministering to people right now who you are at a point where your humanity is eating up with you. Your humanity. You are anointed, but you have not prayed for days. The truth is you don't even know what to say. The problems from home are overwhelming. Your father that you have been managing, you have been thinking that this man is improving. He has now done something stupid. There is an episode for the week he does. But the one for last week has discouraged you and you are saying, will I continue like this? From one bad news to another, when it keeps piling upon you, brothers and sisters, it will shit you bad. That's why the Bible says, in Daniel chapter 11 verse 32, it says, they that know their God, the first thing that will happen to them is what? Strength. Strength. The first fruit, the first benefit of really, really knowing God is strength. Strength there means capacity. Capacity. That you stand through the storms of life. You stand through the challenges of your humanity. I'll never forget a man who was on his way to go for a program with his children. And they were on phone. And the next thing, the line just cut. And he thought it was just um, maybe network and all of that. And trying to call back, he just heard that somebody called and they told him, please, an accident just happened. All your kids dead. And he went and still preached. I mean your children, not spiritual children. Physical children. They died like chickens. Not that they have been sick for three years and you have expected that they may pass on and prepare for it. One moment you are talking with children who are happy and then a line goes off and then they tell you they are all dead. Not in coma, dead. Listen. If you are living in the world of today, you must be prepared. You must sustain capacity to absorb the shocks that life brings if you want to stand. Otherwise a time will come when you see people go to Habalis is because of their humanity. At the beginning of the sickness, they vowed they won't go to any herbalist. They won't go anywhere. But by the time the leg starts producing pus, and they said they are going to cut off everything, or by the time they say the cancer is spreading around the body, at that point, they'll say, look, there's somebody. Don't, don't kill, don't. At that point, you won't know when you will enter a shrine with a goat and say, please do whatever you will do. Your conscience is judging you, but your humanity is ignoring it. A time comes when a lady, because of her depression, just gives in to a man and says, sleep with me, do whatever you want to do. I'm human. I can't stand this. I've endured for 11 years. Taking care of myself, this is too much, please, if it will help me. Years ago, when we used to meet inside the campus, I shared a very touching story that made me... It, 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 it did something to me. There was a woman who was walking through story with a man. And the, nobody in the family was walking. The father, everything. She was, the pay was too bad. And the family was at a point where they were choked financially. I mean to the core. And the woman went to the boss to plead that can he please give her a raise. Or promote her or give her extra jobs. And the man smiled at her. He had now gotten what he wanted because she was now vulnerable. And he told that woman, a married woman, he said, you know what you do. If you are ready to comply by the terms, I will promote you. She first refused. But when the financial burden pinned the family to a point that it was a matter of life and death, people were sick, no money to take care of them. She discussed with her husband and said, you are my husband, at least I'm not cheating on you. It's with your consent. Can't I just sleep with this man? I know some of you say, God forbid, keep quiet. You see some of our elderly ones here just keeping quiet, listening to me. Many young people say, God forbid. Don't say, God forbid. Until you are in a position that really pushes you to the wall. And the man gave her a consent. And she went and slept with the man. Truly, truly. 
He gave her a long sum of money. She was so frustrated afterwards, she left the job. Men have done things in our world because of the reality of their humanity. Their humanity has caught up with them. And their inability to sustain what I'm about to teach you. There are preachers right now who are broken and discouraged. They don't know what to believe again. They have preached every message they want to preach. There are people who have practiced all the laws of prosperity they know to practice. Nothing is working. They are at a point where they are frustrated. There are families right now trusting God for the fruit of the womb. They have done everything. They told the man to leave that one and get another wife. He said, no, I'll be faithful. But now it's seven years and the man has already given the woman a last warning. If by December you are not taken in, I will leave you. Please go and look for another man. Many things that you will not accept when pressure pushes you to the wall, you will look at them and consider them passionately. Then the Bible tells us, here's the formula, 31. Media help us, 40 verse 31. Awesome God, I lift my hands to you. Awesome God, awesome God. But they that wait upon the Lord. It says they shall what? It didn't say they will hear him speak. They will renew their strength. It says, they shall mount up with wings like an eagle. Then they will run. And Satan is waiting for when they will be weary. But he will never find that place. 20 years, they are not weary. He says, don't worry. After 21 years, they will be weary. 30 years, they are still moving. Because like God, they have caught the system. There are men who Satan has been waiting for when they will go down. And he has found out that days are turning to weeks. Weeks to months, months to years, years to decades because of this system. That those who wait upon the Lord, they will run and not be weary. They will walk and not faint. So although you are human, when you started the ministry, they said, leave him. When building projects starts, all your anointing and revelation will scatter. You will stand and you will preach John 3, 16 and you will quote Revelation 1, verse 1. But then like play, they will see a building rising. Rising. And then they will say, don't worry. By the time members start criticizing him, in the midst of it, you are still moving. You have sustained a key in the spirit. Are we together now? And the key is that they that... It's not just about fasting. It's a spiritual system that remedies for the encumbrances of your humanity. Since the Bible says for the fact that you are human, weariness and fainting and falling is an inevitable possibility, humanly speaking. Then he gives you a strategy. He says every time you start sensing that your humanity is dominating your spirituality, he says, wait upon the Lord. It didn't say go to God and go and discuss. It just said, wait upon the Lord. For when you wait, among the many things that will happen is that there will be a renewal of what? Strength. Proverbs chapter 14. I leave my hands to you. Awesome God, awesome God, I leave my hands to you. You're an all. 14 verse 4. I leave my hands to you. Awesome God, awesome God. Go ahead and read it everyone. One, two, read. He said, but much increase is by what? Of what? An ox. Listen. He said, much increase.
comes. Not just by strength. He tries to use an animal that, he, that can help him communicate the level and the order of strength we must have to finish. An ox is a strange animal. It's a farm animal. It's a very, very... When, when you see an ox, really, ox is not a very nice animal. When you come close to it, it even smells. An ox has no business with his physical outlook. All an ox is concerned about is labor. The vision that is set before it. An ox literally can drive a cart or a farm, a farm um, object through the farm. Through mountains, valleys, it will still push it. It gets to a point where it hooks and you will see it breathing. Uh, 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 and you think it's about to finish and it will push it again and continue until it crosses over the mountain. And the Bible says, if you must stand and finish strong, you must sustain strength like an ox. That animal that communicates resilience, that at the point where your humanity catches up with you, like Job, while you are crying with the boils, while you've lost everything, you can say, though he slay me, yet will I praise him. He said, all the days of my appointed time, I know that there is whatever has a beginning has an end. If this issue has a beginning, it has an end. I sustain strength to continue. A time comes when it looks like members are leaving your church. Members are leaving your ministry. Ministry is not growing. You are praying for the sick. And it's as if the anointing does not seem to find expression. And this thing is destroying you. He says, by the strength, of an ox an ox is the animal that even if it cannot move forward it doesn't go back again it stands there until rescue comes to it very strong animal many Christians many many Christians I have seen this thing I've seen it like I'm seeing your face that in I'm talking of a few years because of the unfolding of the culmination of this phase of the move of God and that which is starting. Not many people will be able to stand the kinds of persecutions that will come in the church, will come on individuals. There are many men of God who will literally quit ministry. There are many women who will divorce their husbands because they are pastors and whatever because of financial hardship that comes upon people. I prophesied in 2007 about the recession that will start. People laughed at me. People criticized me. When it hit, I said, I saw another one coming. That's not the only one coming. And brothers and sisters, when this tsunami hits and the earth begins to burn like an oven, you will see compromises of all sorts. Men who would never have bribed will bribe. Ladies who will, who will say, me, I have to marry a man of, somebody who loves God, will now say, anyhow, please, salvage us. There are many ministries that will go through seasons of shakings. There are many men of God, men of God who you had never had issues about, men of God who were not even known for scandals. You will begin to hear things. Now, whether it's false or real is not the issue, is that it is there. You will see great men, fathers of faith, who will, it's, it's almost like they are almost being brought on their knees. Some of them will be accused directly by governmental authorities. Some of them will be linked to corruption. I'm telling you this, write it down. Some of them will be linked as they are pointing out people who are corrupt. They will link their churches and their membership to certain kinds of corruption. And the devil will orchestrate it such that they will be indicted in diverse ways. But it will take the strength of an ox. Some of their own members will write articles about them. And destroy them. And tear them down. Some of them will finally vent out their suspicions. But beyond this mountain of pain will come a move of the Spirit and the excellency of His glory upon the church in unprecedented dimensions. 
and especially the church in Nigeria. Every church called upon by God will go through this season. I guarantee you. It's not something you will pray against. It's something you will receive strength. Listen, not every cup in the kingdom can be pushed away. There are certain cups you only receive grace to drink them. He said, I want to sit by your left and right. And he said, are you willing to be baptized with my baptism and to drink of my cup? This is a very scary teaching tonight. See the way people are quiet. I say, why did I come for Koinonia today? He says, by the strength of an ox. I see this thing happening to men. Many men. I saw it in the visions of the Lord. Fathers who had been faithful for many years now started being unfaithful to their wives. That's what the Bible says. Lovers of pleasure more than lovers of self. I saw a lot of pastors who got into drinking, drinking and smoking. I saw pastors getting into drugs. And I said, my goodness, not just drugs to satisfy themselves, drug as business. Because the financial pressure of ministry was coming upon them. I saw people slaughtering babies. Babies. Even the young men will be weary. They will fall. You who used to love God, you had all kinds of ambitions. You have gathered people and said, God say we should start a church. You just gas out and sit and say, this thing, is it worth it? Is it not better for me? Is it not better for me to just sit quietly? There are times many of you will blame God for anointing you. You will literally blame God. And say, Lord, I was minding my own business. What is all this one? Like Amos, I was just an ordinary farmer. You now came and called me. Oh, I didn't tell you I wanted ministry. Strength. We are in the seasons where this will begin to happen. I saw a release of strange arsenals from hell. I saw them flooding into Nigeria like bees. Like black bees spreading it's like they had been kept for a time as this see when when i tell you these things i want you to know that my heart is heavy as i say it i wish i didn't have to say it but it's the truth praise the lord praise the lord mm. so many things many believers will say where is our god Many people whose Christianity is not founded on love for God will leave God. They will leave God in, in unbelievable ways. They will turn their backs directly on God. Brothers and sisters, when you begin to see this, it has already started happening for many of you. There are three phases that this will happen in. Number one is individuals. Number two is Maybe churches or groups or territories. And then number three, nations and continents. We will see this thing. It's the birth pain of a new revival. It's like a woman who is in a labor room. Never allow the assignments of hell to prevail over you. Please hear me. I speak to you prophetically. Those seasons will come in your life. Believe me. You will thank me for this when the seasons come. It will look like everything you have believed is under fire. It will look like everything you have read about is a lie. Some of you will stand and almost feel like committing suicide. It's already happening to some of you. I want you to know that there are birth pains of a new dimension. And it is not a time to give up. Do not let your humanity swallow you for just beyond it. Joseph was almost giving up. And by the next day, he was the prime minister. God is counting on us for strength. God is counting on us. Many of you will walk alone. Listen, some of you who are used to group endorsements, oh, endorse me. For some of you, it will be a lonely road. Believe me, you will walk alone. Some of you, your parents will look at you and insult you. They will say, you are good for nothing. You are, you are a disgrace to me. 
I gave birth to you. Look at what other children are doing. The more you claim you are spiritual, the more you are failing in life. I'm ashamed of you. And you will walk in that lonely path. You will discuss things with your friends that they will use against you. And stab you to your back and say, I did it. At that point, you will almost not want to trust anybody again. But I'm telling you this. Sustain capacity in the spirit. Those days will come. They are here already. I have seen them. Satan is out on a mission to discredit ministries and men of God. I, I saw like it was like bees that were released. Like a swamp of bees. You will not imagine the levels of discrediting that Satan wants to bring to ministries. Why? So that their voice will no longer be heard. And then the people will be depraved. The Bible says in the days of Samuel when the word of the Lord was scarce. That's what Satan wants. That there be no abundance of the word again. Listen, I want you to know that your spiritual life is annoying the gates of hell. Don't you think your prayers in the night is a welcome development to hell? They want to ravage your family. But every time they want to step in, there is a voice that cries at the gates of heaven in the night. When God wants to make it look like every prophet is fake, there are already prophetic people that God is raising. And Satan has spotted them. He has seen it. He tried to destroy your, your preparation. But since you did, not, you did not stop, then he will now begin to move in strange ways. He says, by the strength of an ox. Listen, I tell you this. Churches will be scandalized in mysterious ways. Men of God will fall victims of women in mysterious ways. That's why I talk to some of us who are careless over women. Be careful. Don't just laugh around and, and say anything goes. Be careful. It's good to be social. But the Bible says, be wise as serpents. He said, but be gentle as doves. Those who speak anyhow, carelessly talking anyhow, there are men of God that run their mouth anyhow. Don't give Satan an arsenal to strike you. But I see this thing happening. I see it happening. It's like an angel of death that is passing over. And only those who are immune will stand. I bring you this word from the throne. This is a word to the body of Christ. When the Lord showed me this, I said, my goodness. But beyond it, brothers and sisters, I saw an emergence of strange glory. Listen. I saw people coming out with tears in their eyes, but heavy levels of unction. Mm. I saw women coming a lot of people some with bruises on their body like blood but I saw again they were holding mantles like a cloak mantles I saw others who had already crossed over but they told people to hold their mantles and they went back into the fire to help other people they had come out but willingly they left it I saw this happen. I saw families turn away from people. Families turn away from their children. I saw children turn away from people. I said, what is happening? Is the manifestation of these spirits. Is the birth pain of a revival. Everything that can be used against you will be used. Everything. Everything that can be used against you will be used. The gates of hell will release its arsenals everywhere. There are certain things you cannot stop, but you must build momentum. The Bible says, and the rains came, and the wind blew, but the house that was built on the rock stood. I lift my hands to you. 
Yo Dios, I'm God. I lift my hands to you. Awesome God, awesome God. I lift my voice to you. You're the awesome God. I lift my hands to you. Awesome God. One more time, sing it from your heart. I lift my voice to you. You're the awesome God. I lift my hands to you. Awesome God. Awesome God. Hear me. When this season come, strength and capacity is what will take men through. There are times you may not be able to pray but make sure you stay. There are times you can't explain to anybody. Make sure you stay. When your ego is stung to the core, when all you have held leaves you, stand. Haven't done all to stand. He says, stand. 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 When your gift and the ability of the Spirit upon your life is no longer appreciated, stand. When your loved ones who used to believe in you now turn and say, look, we even doubt if you are anointed. Stand. 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 Hear the voice of the Spirit tonight. Stand. Haven't done all to stand. 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 It will cost you you will have scars, but stand. He's the awesome God, awesome God, awesome God. He's the awesome God, awesome God, awesome God. You are the awesome God. this is how the miracle working power will come to the church this is how signs and wonders will be restored to the body this is how the prophetic will be restored will be restored this is the hallmark of the true apostolic ministry the capacity to stand stand You will listen to this message a thousand times. I promise you. I say it to go ahead of you. A day will come. No other message will minister to you. You will hear this voice speaking in your dreams. You will hear it speaking in your visions. When you are about to give, give up, you will hear stand. Mm. Stand. Stand. He said, fear not. Isaiah 43. I have redeemed you. He said, I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you pass through the river, it shall not overwhelm you. He says, when you walk through the fire, it shall not burn you. You want grace? This is the way it comes. You want power? I'm not just talking of trying to say I'm anointed. No. He said, let no man trouble me. I went through it. There is a scar. Brothers and sisters, not every man speaks and heaven begins to back them like this. There are scars. Preachers lie to you. They tell you there are no scars. But I want you to hear this voice from the throne. It takes scars to command power in the spirit. Awesome God, awesome God, awesome God, awesome God, awesome God, the faithful God, you're the faithful God, faithful God, mighty God. 
is a mighty God, mighty God, glorious God. Hey, you're the glorious God, glorious God. We lift our voice to you. You're the awesome God. We lift our hands to you. Awesome God, awesome God. I lift my voice to you. You're the awesome God. I lift my hands to you. Awesome God. Hallelujah. There are rankings and there are promotions in the spirit. Hear me? When a man enters a new level of grace, you know. When a man touches a substance that is heavenly, you know. God is elevating men through these persecutions. But it's not going to come the way you expect. It won't come by clapping for you. No! Your voice becomes like the voice of thunder. When you have gained power in the heavens. He's the awesome God. Awesome God. You are the awesome God. Hey, awesome God. I leave my voice to you. You're the awesome God. I lift my hands to you. Awesome God. Hey, I lift my voice to you. You're the awesome God. I lift my hands to you. Awesome God. Hallelujah. Though weeping endures for a night, it says joy comes. Though weeping endures for a night, joy. With the morning, it will look like morning will not come. Stand in the fire. Stand in the heat. Stand through the persecution. Stand through the pain. Stand is the betting of the anointing. Is the betting of power. Is the betting of glory. For out of the shadows of your pain, His glory will arise. Out of your tears, an unction will come upon your life. Out of your discouragement, out of your humanity, he that endures to the end. You may not be able to sing, but stand. You may not be able to cry, but stand. You may not be able to pray, but stand. You may not be able to listen to any message. You will call on friends. They will run away from you. You will call on family members. They will run away from you. But stand. 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 Is a threshing floor in the spirit. Is a wine press in the spirit. The anointing is rising from that pain. The anointing. Power in the spirit. Unction, grace, a message, an apostolic and prophetic mantle will be your reward when you endure. I lift my head to you. You're the awesome God. I lift my voice to you. Awesome God, awesome God, I lift my voice to you. You're the 
criticize what I have told you now many people will say forget about him but I stand before the God whom I serve and I tell you it will happen it will happen it will happen he said that which I tell you in the secret declare down upon the mountain top I've gone through my own for many people you are in your seasons others yours is to come this message is ministering to certain people right now some of you it is memory because you are past that level for some people it's strange because it will not minister to you until that door in one minute i'd like you to lift your voice and say, Father, strength for the days ahead. Pray. Strength. Strength for the days ahead. Are you praying, Koinonia? Strength. Oh Lord, we draw strength from the throne. Those outside, make sure you are praying. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord never told you, you will not go through storms. But he said, I will be with you. Hear this as a word of comfort. When all else fails, know that he is with you. I will be with you. Where you have no voice, call on him. Wait on him. Don't trivialize his presence. He's not one of many things. You will soon see that any other thing that is not him can truly not help you. Prayer point number two. Lord Jesus, hold my hands. Don't leave me alone. I know that there is a burden. I know that there is an anointing. But Lord, between where I am to the place of that anointing, hold my hands. That when I want to give up, let me feel your warmth. Lift your voice and pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to pray and declare 
and tell the Lord my love for you is unbending it doesn't matter what I go through lift your voice and pray solidify your commitment oh I love you I love you I love you oh God I love you through the storms I still love you my family may be having challenges but I love you there are situations around my life and my family that I cannot explain but I love you I love you when I have no words to say know that I love you when I have nowhere to run to know that I love you when I have no one to talk to know that I love you hallelujah hallelujah please everybody keep standing because I have to, I'm going to pray for us so this is important make sure you are sensitive I'm going to take two altar calls very quickly the first set of people I want them to stand here the second set I want them to stand here now there are people who have never truly made up their hearts their minds their spirits to commit themselves to God you've never given your life to Christ or you found yourself please don't play games tonight is not the night to play games there are people inside and outside as far as my eyes can see you need Jesus tonight and say Lord for the days that are ahead you are the anchor that I need you need to make your ways right with Jesus you need to rededicate your life to Christ or come to him the first time inside and outside make your way right here God bless you as you come don't wait for anybody you are the first person to come please if they are coming clear the way for them to come there are people God is speaking to right now come this side come this side don't be ashamed just turn and, and face me but this side God bless you as you are coming as you hear the voice of the spirit tonight don't be afraid don't be afraid don't be afraid don't be afraid Jesus said whoever will come to me and will in no wise cast away hallelujah now please the second set of people I don't want you to be emotional about this I'm praying for everybody please this is not for everybody this is not for everybody please make sure you understand what I say before you come out there are people right now you sense you are in a season of intense spiritual warfare it's like there is an attack you see it I'm not talking of demons just trying to oppress you you know that there is a fight for your grace it's like there is a contention in hell please come and stand here I want to agree with you you need strength you need strength my goodness hold on if there are so many people ah okay let's let's see how you can just stand this side please don't just be emotional it doesn't mean if you don't come out there the, the devil is out to attack people but there are people you it's like a season it's like a season inexplainable events in your life awesome. there are pastors under attack there are ministries under fire they cannot explain there are businesses under attack there are anointings and graces under intense attack he's fighting you for your gift don't worry if there's no room just stand there those of you who are giving your life to Christ just lift your hands and I will pray for you and rededicating your life don't be embarrassed don't be embarrassed at all I want you to say after me father I love you with all my heart I've heard your word tonight and I rededicate my life unto the service of the king this night I declare that I am for Jesus forever I love him with all my heart and I will not return to my own life again I belong to you in the name of Jesus Christ I receive eternal life into my spirit 
All right, keep standing. I will join you with the other people. Listen, guys, this attack is not about you. If you do not understand it, you will hate the individuals that the devil is using. There are some of you, as you are standing here, there are people fighting you. Some of them are your loved ones. Some of them are people you have helped before. Some of them are people you wipe their tears. Some of you, your churches are under attack. Your fellowships, you see it in your dreams. There is just something in your spirit that tells you, look, I'm entering a season of fire. You can't tell. Some of you, it has not happened yet. I'm praying strength for you. Listen, I know what it looks like. You cannot imagine. I know what it means to get to that season. I'm preparing you ahead. Awesome. Lift your hands and let me pray for you. What you need is a, is a supply of strength from the throne. Father, I stretch my hands over your people. Lord Jesus, let there be from the throne strength, strength, endurance, like an ox may you stand through the storm i supply upon you the power of the spirit strength that when men are giving up you will stand when you have no songs may you stand may you stand may you stand the criticisms May you stand the discrediting. May you stand the blackmails. May you stand the misunderstandings. Haven't done all to stand. I supply power to you. Stand. Stand. I pray for every family represented here that is going through this season. There are families that are going through this season. Everything that used to work is no longer working. People are fired from their jobs mysteriously. Oh God of heaven, let there be a supply of strength. You told me to impart strength upon your people. And Lord, I impart that strength. You who has kept me through all the storms and the rain in my life. You who has kept this ministry through all the storms and the rain, keep your people, O oh God. Strength that in the midst of your tears you still stand. Strength. In the name of Jesus Christ. And I speak against the forces that have been released from hell. This is for everybody now. I'm praying. I saw it. An arsenal of powers from darkness. Don't say it does not concern you. Believe me. My God, I pray. Let there be a rod of judgment. A rod of judgment. A rod of judgment. In the name of Jesus Christ. Where your people do not have voices to defend themselves. My God and my King defend them. Where their families cannot speak. Speak for them. Where they have no strength to run. Carry them upon your wings, O oh God. Satan, I speak to you. And I speak to every force of darkness that your people and their gimmicks will not prevail. The forces of demons and the forces of men alike will not stand against the agenda of God. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare upon you that every tongue that rises up against you in judgment May they be condemned. In the name of Jesus. In your time of need. I raise helpers for you. Men who will speak for you in high places. 
in the name of Jesus Christ. May you find places of refuge that you will not run without a place of refuge. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for you that beyond the shadows of your today, let there be an emergence of strange glory. In the name of Jesus Christ. And as a family of faith, Lord, we declare there is a spiritual fortification upon this ministry. There is a spiritual border that protects the hand of God upon this ministry. And we enforce it in the name of Jesus Christ. And everyone who is connected here and belongs to this spiritual tribe, we declare in the name of Jesus that at the end of it you will stand strong. We also pray for all the churches around this city. Every church, oh God, and every fellowship in Zaria. Every church, oh God, and every fellowship in Kaduna State. We pray for the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. That in this season, let your church stand. In the name of Jesus. We pray for all the men and the women of God. In this city and in this nation. Young and old. Fathers and sons alike. My God, I pray that capacity will come upon your church to stand. In the name of Jesus Christ. And that Dagon that tries to exalt itself and defy the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, we judge you. We speak to these spirits that have been released. Zaria becomes an uncomfortable place for you. The same way Ebola was driven out of this nation, we drive those spirits and their agenda. In the name of Jesus Christ, we speak from the realm of the spirit. We silence the plots of witchcraft, the plots of necromancy, those who want to invoke the constellations to work against the body of Christ. I stand under this apostolic anointing and we fortify our spiritual borders. We declare in the name of Jesus Christ that this city is strong, that the church in Nigeria is strong, that our families are strong and that you as a person you are strong hello beloved in christ we hope this message was a blessing to you i would want you to do something for us if you are new here kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body to their soul and to their spirit we would need you to do one thing for us too Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.